It's Monday, August 7th, and today I want to talk to you about the state of Florida. I never really liked Florida that much, and I used to visit my in-laws and my parents when they decided to retire to Florida. But I didn't particularly care for the lifestyle there, and so I never was excited about uh, living there. I enjoyed visiting my parents and my in-laws. We always had a good time and everything. But I always thought that Florida was a little bit behind the time. And now I'm 100% sure of that. Because they have a governor called Ron DeSantis. And they've had disasters that have struck them many, many times since I was visiting them. And the latest hurricane disaster is more than a hurricane disaster because it's an ongoing disaster for all of those who had their houses destroyed. And all of those people who were insured by United Property and Casualty because they ignored the claims for months after the hurricane and then severely underpaid the people there before going bankrupt this year. But how, how in the world did the people in Florida vote for a guy like DeSantis when he is in charge of their well-being And he is directly responsible for making sure that all of his residents have the proper insurance. So Florida is a state in a disaster with hundreds of people who have destroyed properties and they are not collecting their insurance money. And this insurance that they were paying was not exactly inexpensive. It cost a couple thousand dollars a year to insure your home in Florida. And what's even worse about this company, United Property and Casualty, is they were slowly going under. But they continued to pay their executives very high salaries, and they continued to give their investors dividends. They did not put any money aside for their customers. So we have people here living in homes that have been destroyed. Holes in the ceiling, swollen and lifted floors, boxes of their family photos and belongings stored haphazardly around the house, and they still can't all get out of these houses, and they're living in musty, dank conditions, and guaranteed that these people will get sick from these conditions. And this seems to be an epidemic in Florida. The failure of nine different property insurance companies since 2021. And why are they failing? Because they're keeping the money and not using it properly and getting hit by hurricane after hurricane after hurricane. So they've all abandoned the businesses and abandoned their customers. And so I say to you, why do you want to move to Florida? Why would you retire to a place where you might get rained out of your home and live in a place where a guy like DeSantis is the governor and he's not concerned about the people in Florida in a sense of living conditions? He's monster, just worrying about banning books. What is he doing to protect the people of Florida when the weather conditions are outrageous? Sure, the sun shines a lot, but the hurricanes override the bright sunshine in my mind. DeSantis and his government did nothing when the United Property and Casualty started cutting the payments and cut the insurance and justice damage estimates in order to underpay and ignore the increasingly desperate policyholders. 
That's what we found out in this investigation. UPC was an awful company and they were in desperate straits because of total mismanagement. But that didn't affect them giving their their executives and their investors huge chunks of money. The company totally underestimated how much it would have to spend to cover claims. And state officials were warned by others in the industry who were watching this situation that UPC had failed to reserve enough money. But their concerns were ignored. And the officials initiated monthly check-ins with UPSC as its finances were deteriorating. deteriorating. And they mistakenly believed that UPC could cover homeowners claims up until just before they went bankrupt finally. So who who's in charge of this situation? The government officials who are supposed to watch out for their constituents are falling asleep at the switch. And the leader is worried about banning books, not about the health and welfare of the elderly population, but the entire population of Florida. So now because of this major screw up, the state run Florida Insurance Guarantee Association is responsible for trying to close 22,000 United Property and Casualty claims, which will take more than a year and probably cost around $600 million. That's what the officials are saying. $600 million to make up for what the insurance company didn't do. And what Florida was asleep at the switch. Florida's governing body was asleep at the switch. Don't they watch out for these things? Don't they realize that they have a stake in the insurance values that are assigned to take care of the people in their state? No, obviously not. This is the first time since 1992 that the state has to levy an emergency assessment on nearly all Florida residents to help cover the massive insolvency. And that further is raising the homeowner's stakes in living in the state of Florida. So what's the bargain in going to Florida and living in the sun when you have an asshole, an asshole for governor and a state that is clearly mismanaged because of the climate situation. Yes, the sun shines, but the hurricanes come, and now the state is finding itself in a deep financial hole. And Florida is not really a very wealthy state when you come right down to it. Yes, we have the retirees from New York and other parts of the country who are okay, But many of those people are not 100% wealthy and millionaires. They live off a nice pension or something, and they're stuck in Florida, where I'm sure the housing insurance rates are going to go through the roof because of this situation. And is the sunshine going to take care of that for them? I doubt it. So it's a mess, a mess in Florida. Hurricanes strike, DeSantis is the governor, and Florida is in a deep financial problem. So picture that, just picture that, and I will leave you with those thoughts. Bye. Have a great day.